Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about quests. The first thing I want to mention is that armor impacts the difficulty of your quest. This is not something everyone knows, and in my opinion, the game should do a little bit of a better job of telling you this because it's crucial in this meta. It will absolutely impact your hero selection. This means that if you have a very high armor hero, you will get a much easier quest compared to a zero armor hero. This can absolutely be the difference between being able to complete your quest and use their ward or to die on the way there. Now, that doesn't mean that zero armor heroes are unplayable or even bad in this meta. I think some of them are, but others are great. So an example of this is you can have Gallywix at Millhouse, both zero armor heroes, but their hero power will definitely help you complete the quest. They like buying and selling cards. A lot of the quests want you to buy minions, play minions, summon minions, and this is much easier for these heroes. Same thing with spending gold, much easier for those heroes. You can also take someone like a Scabs. Scabs steals cards from other people. You summon more minions. It's easier to spend gold, cycle more minions, etc. So that doesn't mean you know we can't ever take a zero armor hero, but you need to have a good reason for it. For instance, an Omu in this meta, I wouldn't advise taking it because the hero power doesn't really help you that much completing your quests. So keep that in mind when selecting your hero. The second thing I want to talk about is the relationship of the quest to the quest reward. It's very tempting to see a very awesome quest, a Sinstone, a Pilfered Labs, um, that has this impossible requirement. You know, like play 10 beasts or Nagas. If you have zero beasts or Nagas in your shop, that is going to take you an incredibly long time. And if you want to rush that quest, it means you will be buying many, many subpar minions, which means you will then be losing a lot of fights, which means you'll have very little health if you are able to complete the quest. You can just not roll those specific types and completely... Uh, completely fail and, and take a top eight. So this is something I really want to emphasize on. When looking at your quest reward, look at the requirement and consider whether you're going to be able to complete it or not. There's a couple of mindsets or I guess strategies revolving this stage of the game. And I'm going to share with you my way of deciding what quest I'm going to take. So I'm going to try to win the game, that goes without saying. Now, sometimes when the quests roll around, I may have to adjust that game plan because I just don't like the hand I've been dealt. We want to take good quests that help us win the game. So Pilfered Labs is awesome. Taking a Victim Spectre and using that to triple your cards and get high tier cards and then make more copies of those high tier cards. Awesome. We want to do those things, but we don't want to die before we finish the quest. So we need to look at our board and say, okay, do I have the right setup for this? Look at the shop. Are there minions of the type that you have to buy? Do you have the quest that asks you to summon minions? Do you have the quest that asks you to have X amount of friendly minions die? Do we have imprisoners? Do we have sewer rats? Do we have anything that helps with that? Generally speaking, if you have a really strong quest, that can win you the game, such as, you know, Pilfered Lambs, and you have a good setup for the requirement, it's awesome to go for it and we can go all in on the quest and win the game because of it. Sometimes you have a more modest quest. So a good example of a more modest quest would be Red Hand. Getting plus 12, plus 12 on a minion every turn is cool, but it's not going to win you the game, at least not on its own. So sometimes I'll be able to complete Red Hand on the very turn that I get it offered, but usually it'll be more like a two turn process. So let's say it'll ask you to buy, you know, four elementals and you happen to have, you know, two elementals or place elementals or this or that. You can cheese it a lot of the time where it just takes you two turns. And that's, that's I think, a great pace. I wouldn't want to wait more than three turns on a Red Hand. That's for sure. So that's one of those quests that We'll take it if we can cheese it. Now, that means that you're going to gain tempo because other people are going to work on a more ambitious quest. 
you are getting plus 12 plus 12 every turn. That means you're strong, you can now level, and you can then get access to either high tier cards to try and win the game, such as, you know, an Omega Buster, and then you build around that, or you just buff some magnetics and you have a completely acceptable, reasonable board and you get a top four placement. That happens as well. So the other way to tackle more ambitious quests is you might just be really strong. You might just have an early triple, you might just have Yorel on the board and just this awesome board that's not going to lose fights for a while. Then you can also just take more ambitious quests because you're not going to be bleeding out while you're waiting for the quest to complete. So let's say something like spent 60 gold, that's quite a bit. If you are losing, if your board is weak, you cannot afford to wait for 60 gold. You're going to die. <laughs> if you're winning, hey, that's fine. You can afford it. You spend gold when you're leveling, you spend gold when you're buying upgrades for your board. That's going to happen at some point, but you can't you know, wait for that when you are bleeding out. On that topic, I like to stay on tier two on turn three. This is a very common thing to do where you level on turn two. And then if you don't like your shop on turn three, people sell their minion and go to tier three. This is referred to as going three on three. Now, this can work, absolutely, and I'm not saying that there aren't very successful players that do this, but my reasoning behind staying on tier two on turn three, meaning instead of selling my card and buying, you know, and leveling, I buy two cards instead. It's that when the quest turn comes around, you can have four or five units on your board if you started with a token, as opposed to two or three if you went three on three. This means that you're going to have a wider range of opportunities to complete quests you're going to be able to summon minions easier. You're going to be able to kill off your own minions easier. You're going to be able to buff your minions a lot easier if you get a spawn or a URL or anything. You're going to have a much wider board to buff. So there's a lot of opportunities there to complete your quests very quickly if you have more units on the board. This is not the case when you go three on three, so early tier three. Once again, not to say that you can't win the game going three on three, but my logic right now makes me stay on tier two and follow the more normal style where you level to tier three on seven gold instead of the um, five gold when you're going three on three. Now, minion types are also very important when you are looking at your quest. I'm going to cover a few things that can be very good or very bad depending on the minions that are in. So let's say you get a mask, the quest reward that doubles end of turn triggers, usually paired with a Felbat or a Charga. These are some very difficult quests, but they can have a massive reward, but only really if Murlocs are out. Because if Murlocs are in, you can have this awesome demon board that just scales like mad with a Felbat that goes off twice, but then you're just gonna get poisoned and it doesn't matter. Same thing with the Charga, you can have these big dynamic duos getting tons and tons of gems, but you get poisoned. That's not to say that poison, I think, is bad for the game. That's a whole different debate. We'll probably talk about that in a different video. But just keep in mind that building a big ball of stats is just worth a lot less in a Murloc lobby. Now, Red Hand and Cooked Book, those are two quests that buff minions up. They are better, in my opinion, with mechs in because you can use Red Hand on a magnetic and same thing with Cooked Book. If we buff a war gear up to say a 1717 with red hand and then slap that on top of a deflecto bot, that is so much better than buffing some random minion. Same thing with cookbook. It's much easier to get strong fast. If we can just accumulate stats on the vine shield mechs by buying magnetics. <clears throat> Smoking gun is another good example. It's a really strong quest reward but only really when you have, at the very least, beasts or mechs, preferably both, and sometimes demons. This is because Rat Pack has a lot of tokens, um, Omega Buster, you can have Replicating Menace. These are all cards that are very strong when they get that individual buff that Smoking Gun provides, but not so good if mechs and beasts are out. Evil Twin is another example that you don't really want Murlocs to be in, 
because evil twin encourages you to make this huge minion and then copy it and that's obviously a lot weaker when murlocs are in you can still get around you can still build a big deflecto bot and then have divine shield and counter the poison same thing with a mech will but it's just easier to build one large minion because you don't know if you're going to be getting enough cards to build a deflecto bot but if murlocs are out you know you're going to get some tools to build a big minion that's going to happen so that's why I prefer Merlocks to be out for that quest. The last example I'm going to give is Anima Bribe. I think that's also better when you have access to mechs, just because it's easy to build a big board. And then when you do roll into those high value Divine Shield units, such as the Flectobot, such as Mech Roll, you can just sell your big minions, transfer it onto the mechs, and you have a very good board to go into the final few battles. All right, guys, that was my short video with a lot of tips on how to play with quests please let me know in the comments if you enjoy this type of content and i'll be sure to make more of it have a good day